Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Wellman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. What does Van Jefferson have to do with Marvin Harrison Jr.? This hand position on this route where he should have squared Matthew Stafford and used overhand position with his palms facing the ball. Instead, he's catching it at a late window with underhand position. And that's what we're going to talk about today with Marvin Harrison Jr., a terrific NFL draft prospect up at the top of the screen on the left here against Georgia and we're going to see a very similar hand position that seems to plague him with certain routes see how he waits till the last window to try and outstretch for that ball it's fine that he's going to wait that he's going to stretch for this ball but he could have attacked this ball with his chest facing the quarterback and still fully extended to the ball instead what happens is that the ball arrives at the latest window and now he's got to clap his hands onto that target. And when you clap your hands onto a target, it means that you're going to end up just hitting the ball with one hand, usually before the other, and that creates a harder catch environment for the receiver. You want both hands to meet the ball at the same time. This is a fundamental thing that's taught in a lot of, uh, you know, middle school and high school Pop Warner type of programs, but it's something that, again, you know, players come from different environments, and obviously he came from one of the greatest wide receivers as a father, you know, Marvin Harrison Sr., one of the greatest wide receivers to ever play the game. But even so, there are fundamental lapses that players have because they're just young and there's so much to learn about the position. So what you're seeing here is a lapse in terms of judgment about how to attack this ball. When the hands are wide like that and you're going underhand the hands tend to get wider and you can't turn your chest to the ball and if he actually extended his arms out with his hands together he would be turning his chest to the ball he could catch the ball with his hands first if they go through his hands they could actually bounce off his chest and he might have a second chance opportunity to grab the target so you can see from this point of view with the hands underhand like that he doesn't have his chest in front of it. The ball's going past his chest. If he extended his arms in front, the ball would be, the arms would be in front of the chest. We're going to look at another example of this here against Georgia later on where he's um, in the slot, slot right, and he gets the nice release. He gets some separation. And, you know, this is a tough throw high-low um, with high-low coverage. And you see him do a good job you know, getting the initial separation, the ball's floated out there by C.J. Stroud, and instead of jumping back for the ball, he tries to catch the ball over the shoulder. The intent here for receivers like Jefferson and Harrison is to try and catch the ball in stride and continue downfield. But sometimes with a difficult target, you just got to ensure that you can make the grab. And he sacrifices both height and hand position trying to catch this ball underhand and over the shoulder. Instead, Again, he should be turning back to the quarterback and performing a jump back technique where you plant and you jump towards the quarterback. And if you do that, then you can attack with overhand position, high point, and do it in a manner where you're jumping fully you know, in the air at your maximum height. Instead, with that underhand position like that, he's just going with the what he expects is the trajectory, but you can see the ball's a little bit behind him when he continues downfield like that. If he turned and jumped back, he would be square to the ball. He could look the ball in without having to crane his neck. He could have his chest in front of the ball. So if it hits his hands and, it, and he's going to end up having more of a soft recoil and he can catch, you know, make a second attempt to catch that football. Here, he has no second chance opportunity to catch this ball if it comes off of his hands. And it just gets a little bit over his mitts here because he can't jump fully for the ball. So again, you know, jump back technique, overhand. We're going to look at it again. Again, you can see that this is a habit for Marvin Harrison Jr. It doesn't make him a bad receiver. It makes him a young receiver. So don't listen to this and think, oh, I hate Marvin Harrison Jr. I love so much about his game. But every player has, or most every player, has something to work on. And this is another example that he's working across the middle and he drops this ball 
because he lets the ball go past his chest. He doesn't square it with his chest, and he uses underhand position in a scenario where he could turn back, square his chest, extend his arms, and use overhand position instead. And that, when you do that, you're meeting it at the earliest window. He's meeting it at its latest window of arrival. So when you meet the ball at the latest window of arrival, you give yourself only one chance to catch the ball. If you meet it at the earliest window of arrival, you get at least two chances to be able to catch the ball because if it bounces off your hands, it's probably still going to be in front of your body. So we see it again against Michigan. This is a habit. We've seen, I've seen, you know, this is four catches four or four target attempts in two games, two games for him. So is this something that maybe he's corrected in 2023 as I start to dig into his tape then? We'll see, you know, but it's something that you can see he has lapses with. And so if he wants to make those tough catches, the ones that separate the premier NFL wide receivers from mere, merely starters like Van Jefferson, because Van Jefferson was considered a great route runner coming out of school, but his hands positions, even when I scouted him in the rookie scouting portfolio, were an issue that he didn't seem to always use the correct hand position. Marvin Harrison is having that too. I would say he's an even better vertical route runner than Van Jefferson, but if he can shore this up, he can be really worth the hype. I hope he will. Thanks again for listening. For more RSP videos, you can check out my YouTube channel, Matt Waldman's RSP Film Room, and my site, www.mattwaldmanrsp.com.